The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Warren Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendricks. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. Welcome back, everyone. If this is the three-hour episode or the third of the one-hour episodes, we're going to talk about men's freestyle now. That's Jason. I'm Richard. You've been listening to us for two hours. Time for hour number three, the uh, fifth and sixth days of wrestling at the Senior World Championships. Or episode 351 or episode 83. Yeah, something like that. Because we're actually still recording. In case you started with us in Greco, it is now Wednesday, 12.30 a.m. Central Time on Ellis Coleman's birthday, August the 16th. (laughs) And that's a joke. If you listen to Greco, you'll understand why we're mentioning that now. But uh, Richard Immel over there in Colorado Springs. I'm Jason Bryant here in New Brighton, Minnesota, where the weather will be told to you at 9.15 a.m. every morning at Jason M. Bryant. Richard. It's freestyle time. It's freestyle. So let's just let's just jump right into this bad boy. All right. Um, and we're going to start with... We're going by date, in case you're wondering. Going by date. We're going to start with Friday, August 25th, uh, Freestyle 57. Cause, which is uh, weird, and, because we started in the middle of the weight classes for the other styles on their first day. And now we're just going to be like, ah, screw it. We'll just start at the beginning. Yeah, start at the beginning. Why not? Um... So 57. Can I actually start with stats before we begin? Just to get these out of the way? Because yeah, if they, I don't want to bury the lead. LED. It's stats time. 65 Olympians registered. 28 medalists from the world championships at the senior level. 10 Olympic medalists. And as this becomes a prevailing theme in the sport of wrestling... 42 wrestlers have won junior world medals that are registered for this event. So 275 entries, the second most Greco, 293, of course, give or take, because the French entered like 50 at each weight class. But uh, again, freestyle, the second most popular of the three styles. And we will start talking freestyle in the world of wrestling with Richard now. Yeah, with Richard. At Richard underscore Immel. Take it away, Dickie. So 57 is a very interesting weight, much like 65, which we will get to on tomorrow's episode. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's so late in Colorado Springs. Both Chris Moen and Gary Abbott and the janitors have left. Yeah, yeah. I'm... For perspective, I've been sitting in this exact spot for... Uh, let's see, almost 16 hours straight now. I'm I'm about 15 and a half hours in. So, uh, World Championship Week, what are you going to do? I just want to see if Blood Round has already recorded and posted their show yet. <laughs> I bet they have. <laughs> I'm actually looking. Hold on, let me see. Uh, I, used... I have some great points to make about 57. I'm All just... right, well, hold on. Let, yeah, let's see. No, no, let's see. Uh, we have um, uh, the latest Steelwood podcast. By the way. Good show from the boys in Ohio State. They're not on the network, but Steelwood Radio, good show. Have not seen the... Uh, uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Blood round is posted. (laughs) Can't wait to listen on my uh, commute home. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you're going to get that Wednesday morning release on early Wednesday morning. Okay, so 57, here's your points. Tommy and Kevin, you suck. Oh, man. We've, so the the seeds for 57 are your four Olympic medalists of 57 from last year, Kinchegashvili, Higuchi, Aliyev, and Rahimi. At 57, all four seeds are not wrestling. So no seeds at 57. Kinchegashvili and Aliyev have moved up to 61. We'll get to that. Rahimi uh, apparently got hurt after winning the spot on the Ar- Iranian team. So they're sending someone else. And then Higuchi lost his wrestle off. Um, so to Nick Suriano, right? 
to Nick Suriano, who is transferring <laughs> to Azerbaijan for the tournament. Um, yeah. So Ray, Ray Higuchi, that, third deck at Penn State. Right. <laughs> That's so, how so we this, started, folks. This this leaves us with um, quite an interesting dynamic at fifty seven because uh, all the good guys historically are gone. Right. So um, looking at uh, you know looking at who we have. Okay, you got Dubov, who was an Olympic silver, and he's going down. Or, or no, I'm sorry. He's normally he normally competes at 61, right? He's big, but he's the guy that that beat Dennis last year. Yeah, he came down for mistaken. the games and stand down. Yeah, yeah, came down and stayed down. Then you've got uh, Bakalom Tadzi, who was uh, at 61, uh, who who was the um, Steber beat him in the world finals. I right, mean... Steber beat him in the world finals. Then you got Erden Bat of Mongolia who uh, was a world bronze a couple years ago. You know, you've got, like, you've got that caliber of guy. you got good guys, but no one overwhelming, right? You've got Amir Aslanov of Azerbaijan. Junior world champ. Who's tough. Young kid, this guy. I mean, this if, if there's a time for a guy like him to break out, it's that year after the, the, the Olympics. I mean, he's got cadet medals. He's got junior world medals, 20 years old. You see this type of talent come through, and it's not. This isn't bought talent from another federation. This is this is Azerbaijan. This is Baku trained. So uh, this is this is a guy to look out for. Yeah, and and it looks like they're gonna Azerbaijan's gonna send him over the European champion, right? right. Who was Edirishvili. So I mean, you, we still clearly don't know specifically, you know, until they step on the scale. But um, that's the kind of talent we're talking about here. Um, you know, and other guys, I mean, this field is so wide open to me. Um, it is, let me ask you this, is Kwan Il Yang in here or is it, uh, Hak Jin Jong? It's Hak Jin. Okay. He's, he's tough. Um, you know, you got, uh, obviously Russia's going to send a tough guy and a Guev. But man, this, this field is, is ripe for the picking. Um, and, and I like that because, for the United States, we're sending Thomas Gilman. Thomas Gilman, you know, he he's won a junior world medal. But he's a new guy, fresh guy. And this is a weight class where he can come in and I think, you know, before you see the field, on the pecking order of U.S. guys you think are going to medal, Thomas Gilman is somewhere towards the bottom, you know, as far as, uh, you know, medal locks or percentage to medal, however you want to judge it. But you got your Kyle Snyders and Jordan Burroughs, but Gilman's, he's new, he's got to prove himself. He can do it at this weight class. I mean, this weight class, he can come in and it will not surprise me if he wins a world medal. Not one bit. Well, one thing to remember about Gilman, too, you say he's the bottom of the weight class. He was the bottom of the weight class when it came to the world team trials. He was the nine seed. Right. Well, we have a good good thing going with nine seeds uh, based on Jaden Cox last year. But point Mon being. Arrow didn't do too bad either. Yeah, Molinaro, he he did I he did I, yeah uh, yeah I, you know you're looking at the the new guys and this is sort of a trend. Gilman and Zane Rutherford are at these weight classes where they're new, but the weight classes are vacated essentially from the top talent, uh, so they can come in and they can do great right away, and and not saying that they wouldn't if you know a Kincheshvili is in there, but I mean. Gilman's got this ripe for the pick, and he's just got to go out there and take it. And I love his mentality. I love his approach to wrestling. I love how just gritty and how, he's a fighter, man. I love it. Um, he's guilty pleasure, one of my favorite yeah. wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, that's a know? great way to describe him. I have not yet watched the flow documentary on it, but I've just seen the sound clips. It was that great. Put out. It was great. You've, oh, you've seen it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm yeah. gonna have to log in uh, between some things that uh, I may or may not be doing with a a. a pumpkin that uh anyway I, i'm not going to talk about the round ball at all but that's definitely something that uh the clips that are just out there is like yeah i may have told john smith to go do something i, I didn't mean it though <laughs> it's just like <laughs> guilty pleasure it's like it's like watching nip tuck you don't want to admit it that you like hey, the that was show. A good show though that show <laughs> that show was guilty that was show was a guilty pleasure it was just like all that crap on FX before FX became good. It was like, I'm going to watch Nip Tuck. I'm going to watch Thomas Gilman wrestle. Yeah, I'm making that connection, folks. Hawkeye fans, don't worry about it. It's not an insult. Let me put this in perspective, though, on 
just exactly how wide open this weight class is. So the last quad, the last four years, world championships, world championships, world championships, Olympics, those last four, only one person in this field won a medal at this weight class or comparable weight class uh, that's entered uh, this time around, right? So one person in the last four years has medaled at this weight class entered in the field. How about that? That's pretty good. It's not bad, right? That's Erdin Bat of, Mo- of Mongolia. So that's what I'm saying is you're going to have new medalists. It's who's it going to be? You know, take your All pick. Right. Names, names to jump out. Na- names that jump out at you. And of course, this is where in in our spreadsheet we mentioned this probably midway through the women's episode or our two and a half or one and a half of this episode, depending on whether or not how we do it. Do we go Dan Carlin style or what? But previous federation in this weight class there are four russians there's the russian and then there's the russian from macedonia the russian from kazakhstan and the russian from belarus i'm going to circle the russian from kazakhstan his name now is nurislam sanaev you may remember him as artas sana this is a guy who uh, he beat sam hayswinkle he beat a lot of of good guys made two world championship teams when he transferred to Kazakhstan lost in the medal matches both times. He he was lost bronze both times. This is a guy poised for a medal. And again, these, the, the Russian imports or in this case, Russian exports they're they're, they're going to be very, very prevalent in freestyle. You have three extra Russians in this weight class and Artasana, a.k.a. Nurislam Sanyaev, is one of those guys to watch. Yeah, right there with you. Um, I think that's a good wrap-up on uh, on 57, you know? Uh, we did mention the actual Russian himself, oh, we could Oguyev. Do yeah, Oguyev. Yeah, Zaur Oguyev. Two-time Cadet World Champion, was, was the bronze medalist at the Europeans. Again, that weight class won by Erdurashvili, who has not entered for Uzbekistan, but the guy who did take a silver medal, we didn't really mention, Andrei Dukov of Romania, and who is by way of Ukraine. Correct, yeah. He he he, good. And Suleiman Atli from Turkey was the other bronze medalist. So, uh, Europeans is, by the way, that was one of the best wrestling tournaments I've ever been to in my life, so... Uh, those are that's a bucket list item for you wrestling fans, European championships, because there are guys that will place like 15th at the Europeans that will place like third at the world. So, uh, it's it's basically an indicator of who's good, but an indicator of ah, uh, just throw these out the window. So anyway, 57. That's a rap ski. 61. This is uh, as the kids say for a non-Olympic lit. weight. Are you kidding me? This is. I think this is the best weight class in freestyle. Most exciting weight class. Maybe not the best, but for me, it's the one I'm most excited to watch. Um, we got five bolded here. Five bolded. And yeah. as, as if you need the ex- explanation, what bold it is, is it's, it's a world or Olympic medalist at the senior level. Right. So, I mean, you've got two-time world champ Haji Aliyev, who won this weight class the two years before the Olympics before it was not in the Olympics. He dropped down to 57 last year, won Olympic bronze. He lost to Vladimir Kanchegashvili of Georgia, who was the Olympic champ, world champ the year prior at 57. He's bumped up to 61. Um, then you've got, uh, I mean, who else do you got? You got... Uh, uh, Yalish Bonnier Rodriguez? Yeah, yeah, he's... The destroyer, not the destroyer of worlds. He is what? Somebody called him like he assassinates people with... I don't know, there was... Something from the Pan Am games that somebody <laughs> called him like a ruthless assassin. I mean, when he beat Angel Escobedo to a pulp, that was that was the match that was like, I don't know, Slayer of Dreams. He, he wasn't Destroyer of Worlds. It was that was Gabe Dean. It was like who? It was like it, anyway. He destroys people. He's good. Cuba. Other names, uh, you know, Dalet Nizbayekov from uh, Kazakhstan. He's another medalist. And I'm uh, Logie Bear. Logie Bear, you got Rashidov of um, of Russia. Then you that's got... the thing. The 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 European runner up to Kinchigishvili, Ahmed Chakayev, not at this weight class. 
Yeah, he's he's not wrestling. Not he lost. competing. He uh, yeah, Rashidov won the Russian Nationals, and uh, he's he's dang good. Um, and it, Chikaya bombed Kinchegishvili in the finals. It was like one of the better. Like, oh, you got fived and you lost, and and yeah, I fived you and I lost the match. Right. Um, the other one to watch out is is Ben on Asan Poor of Iran, who is, I mean, he didn't win a medal last year. I think he got fifth at the, uh, at the world championships. He lost to Logan and Chikayev, but he's good. He is very good. So yeah, junior world champ. Mm-hmm. Uh, also you, you mentioned the Russians. I like, uh, uh, Genghis Khan or, uh, Erdogan. <laughs> Opan Sa. <laughs> Opan Sa. Was his old name. Genghis Khan Erdogan. So as uh, you know what? I first heard, how he changed his name on, I get another flow plug, uh, malicious intent. Mike Malinconico goes, he changed his name to Genghis Khan and then <laughs> named his name after the president of Turkey. He's like Genghis Khan. And then the president's name. That's badass. I, I'm paraphrasing. Cause I'm pretty sure Mike Malinconico probably said ass somewhere in malicious intent, but yeah. Uh, the artist formerly known as Opon Sat, who once was ranked the number one in the world, who once lost to Logan Steber in New York City, who is now Chingizhan Erdogan of Turkey, and one of two other... Okay, we got the Russian, and then the other Russian at the weight class is uh, Hussein Shakbanov of Belarus, who is a cadet world silver medalist in 2011. So that's where we stand on the Russian imports. Yes. I mean, this weight class is... Is ridiculous. I mean, it, and how even does I, a non-Olympic weight get this good, Richard? I don't know. I think they all just said, "I'm not cutting weight this year." And you know, here's another theory behind that: is since the weights are changing to ten weight classes, really the Olympic non-Olympic thing, it doesn't matter. <laughs> all the weights are changing, so they're going to they're going to have to make a weight class stipulation next year. With the weights changing, they can't be like, "Well, no, you're at a different weight." Well, like, dude, you changed the weights, like all the weights. All the weights. All the weights, yeah. I mean, I I'm interested pick- how they're going to handle the seeding thing. Speaking of seeds, I didn't mention the seeds. Uh, not that they matter, God, really. You suck right now, Richard. I suck? <laughs> this is uh, hour three, in case you're wondering. You're watching Perspectives. That's so the SN- top seed is Chukayev from Russia, who we mentioned is not in the field. The other three are in the field. Logan Steber was the two, Asun Poor the three, and Andre Perpolita of Moldova, the four. So with the shuffling in play, Steber essentially gets the top seed. Asampor and Perpolita separated on the bottom. Everyone else is drawn into the field. So that's how that shakes out. Um, yeah, that may or may not be a good thing. If if Bonnie Rodriguez is sitting there like, hey, guess what? I'm running a 32. Yeah, that could be interesting. Not, uh, but yeah. let's talk a little bit about Logan Steber. Uh, the reigning world champion at this weight class. Uh, he's got the offensive firepower to match anyone in the world. He's going to be open. He's going to give up points, but he's going to go. I mean, I mean, the guy has an unbelievable just clutch factor. Doesn't matter how far down he gets, he can come back and win a match. Yeah, not always gas, not always break. No. Always he, clutch. Always clutch. Did you just stall there? No, that was actually something my uh, my college roommate said to me one time when I tried to find a bar in Fargo. And I found it. He goes, you're not always gas, you're not always break, but you're always clutch. So I uh, I borrowed that into Logan Steber territory. Yeah, that's great. So Like how I brought Fargo into the conversation. I was going to mention that too. We finally got Fargo into the show. Our third show of the night, or our first, depending on how we do this. Turf mug in the house. <laughs> yeah, I wish Bird I was in my house. Bird's Horse is right behind me. So and Eskimo Joe's mug here from Stillwater. I'm sure you'll love that, too. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Um, oh, wait, that's T. Mills. Yeah, she's she's out. Uh, not in the office right now. Of course, no, <laughs> Nobody's of course in the no office. one's in the office the right now. The cockroaches are asleep. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know how you you bookmark the or uh, handicap this weight class, but uh, man, I'm just excited to watch it. There, there's four or five guys, I mean, it, six guys that dude, could win this weight. Kinchegishvili Steber match. That think would be the greatest thing I've ever seen. I think because they're I both mean, similar. 
they both have that clutch factor. They give up points. They throw. They throw for anything. Um, it would be like Haji a... Aliyev. Hello. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, not to be overlooked. I yes, this I'm, guy. I'm well aware Haji Aliyev. Um, but yeah, I would think between Steber, Aliyev, and uh Bone Rodriguez, um, uh, Asan Poor, Rashidov. And uh, maybe even throw Opon Sot Genghis Khan in there. <laughs> I, uh, this I is it. incredible. This is just incredible. So yeah, hoping to- uh, Abdullah Kazin from the uh, the Matt dot com is not listening to this right now. Uh, Jadidi is also in this weight class. Oh, medicine man! <laughs> if you're listening, you are my hero. You are Nick Suriano's lawyer, but you are also my hero. We need the Jod's Photoshop contest to come back. <laughs> soon on that note i think we might drop and head to 86 kilos yeah let's let's move on up 86 dude you have been singing the jeffersons but you've never once said to the east side here's a little fun fact about richard so in my when i was growing up in my room i had it like one of those tv boxes with the antenna on it but it had the the turn dial with 13 (laughs) with 13 channels and the only channels I could get were ESPN on three, and then I got the Nick at Night channel on like seven or something. See, you got it on Nick at Night. I got it like in syndication on like channel five, or right? What, like the UHF station. We had three, ten, and thirteen, and then we got the other channels like Doctor Mad Blood's like sat Sunday afternoon horrible horror flick on channel thirty three on the other dial on the box. You know, had the two. We had the two dials, the one through thirteen, and then like the. Anyway, so. Today, Junior. Eighty six kilos. Let's let's get back on task here. It's only midnight, so. Um. Yes, Donny Chirati. Yeah, he's okay. Let me. Jaden Cox. Yeah, you got Chirati Cox. Um. Gostiev of Azerbaijan is tough. Uh, Ganev of Bulgaria, he's older, but a former world champ. Um, da, 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 da. Well, technically, uh, you're not a former world champ. You're, you're past, past world, champ. world champ. Okay, past. Give me a break here. Salim Sorry, Yassar. My, my inner DB freaking copy editor to speak. Yes, I always write past. I never write former. Um, so Salim Yassar, well. he's probably... I mean, he's among the favorites there. Olympic silver, world silver, last last couple of years. Um, yeah, to me, I I think I said, I think I tweeted this out. I see four guys in this weight class. But the, this the, is a giant weight class too, Richard. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Um, I think Jaden Cox, Salim Yassari, Yazdani Chirati, and uh, Ghosty of, of Azerbaijan are the four to watch as far as gold medal threats. Um, and, you know, assuming they're separated, which they're not really separated. So, yeah, because Yasdani Chirati, no criteria here. He moves up a weight. Right. Yasar is the one seed. Uh, Karimi was the two, but Yasdani Chirati takes his spot. Uh, Sabalos Fuentes of Venezuela, who was tough. I think he was fifth at the Olympics last year. Right. Uh, he's the three seed. And then Baranowski, uh, blood round from Poland. is Bar- Baranowski. Right. He's the four seed. So. Yeah, sorry, uh, Tommy, you're not getting it. It's Zbigniew Baranowski. <laughs> yeah, but this weight class was a little, a little difficult to peg. Like, who's the guy? Because they've all sort of beaten each other, except for, uh, you know, Yazdani Chirati has beaten everyone pretty much. Uh, he, he did have the uh, you know David Taylor match at World Cup that he lost, but that's the only match he's lost this year. And besides that, he's. He's looked really solid, but you don't think that's in the back of his mind that he got the dog walked on him by an American who's not even the best American at the weight class. So let's talk about David Taylor's uh, World Cup because he beat Yazdani Tarati and then he beat the two uh, other Olympic bronze medalists or uh, yeah, Olympic bronze medalist slash Olympic champ uh, with Sharifov. But he also beat the Russian entrant at this weight class, Vladislav Valiev, who was a junior world champ a couple years ago. But Valiev was. You know, no one thought he was going to be anything. He came out and he torched Russian nationals, and he won. Uh, I think he won the uh, Zolkowski tournament uh, recently. Z i o l. Stop it. So that's how you spell it. But um, yeah. So I mean, 
it's just incredible World Cup he had. But the point being is uh, this field, while deep, I think you have an elite tier, and then it and then it drops off to another tier with the, um, you know, the Sabalo Fuentes uh, is my oh, scrappy. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to remember was was he the guy that beat Sargush in eleven? I'm just I'm just trying to wonder. If it was that long ago, there was a guy from Venezuela, or was it? I don't know if he if he beat it, but it was Sargush Russell guy from Venezuela, and like a rubber shot. You're like, why is this match even happening? I can't remember if it was Sabios Fuentes or not. That was the year Burroughs beat him mm-hmm. in, at the World Championships, and it was like, what? But uh, you know, other names to watch: Istan Varib from Hungary, uh, bronze medalist. Then you've got. We got Dallin Beckoff of Kazakhstan. It's not bad. Uh, Sorry, I had a pregnant pause there for. No, you're good. <laughs> Orgadol of Mongolia. Um, you're Jaime Espinol, your Olympic silver medalist, is in there. Even though he's who he's... is in the WWE developmental system now. <laughs> there you go. That's a fun fact. Jerry Briscoe loves him some Jaime Espinol. Yeah, Boris Makov. Oh, I I did have a fun fact. There were three Russian transfers in this weight class that were all sort of. In the mix, uh, Makoev, um, Gostiev, Gostiev. Um, but there were who's there, the other? There were uh, you know what? Let me pull it up because I only see two on my list. Maybe one was a scratch or a double entry or something along those lines. Yeah, it could have been a scratch. I mean, I got I actually wrote it in my. Uh, I know preview. Armenia had a scratch, I believe. Yeah, I think he was one. Um, if I can pull up the right paper here. By the way, speaking of uh, American colleges, it's time to mention Vile Haino from Campbell. He's in the weight class, one of the few Finns that wrestles freestyle. I uh, saw Vile at the European Championships in Nova Sad. He has moved back to Finland. His brother Yere will see at uh, 125. But, uh, yep, so we've mentioned Mr. Barrero. From American and Hano now from Campbell. And uh yeah, so we'll we'll continue on. We've got a couple more down the line. I stand corrected on that. That was ninety seven I was talking about, not eighty six. Well you suck. Yeah, we'll get to that. The last uh last weight class we'll talk about. Uh what do you think? Uh Jaden Cox, should we talk about him a little bit? I mean he's No. No. I think people no, no. know know about Jaden right. Cox. You were training camp. Yeah. You got eyes on him. Andy Hamilton did the great interview with him, but uh mobility. What are we uh what are we expecting? I mean The dude looks good. And he was going uh, with Snyder. I mean, the, I, the dude looks good, of course he looks good. The guy's freaking okay twenty something years old and chiseled, but and in reference we to your all question, would kill to have a physique like that. But anyway. Yeah, he uh his mobility looked great. I mean, he was wrestling the the best guys in the country. He was wrestling Snyder. Uh, he was wrestling. Um, <laughs> funny story about Hayden Zilmer. Hayden Zilmer was gut wrenching him, and he didn't know that Hayden was a Greco guy and had the Greco. You know, the Greco guys have better gut wrenches. I think it's pretty well known. But <laughs> Jaden screamed across the room like, uh, "This is uh, not cool." Basically, is how he somewhat phrased it. Uh, to the coaches, but it, it's just oh, so, so they put a Greco guy on him to basically say, "Work on your gut wrench defense." Exactly. Here's a guy from North Dakota State, yeah, who also got third at the trials. By yeah, the way. he's a double national double national team member, right? So um, first guy yeah, Winkle. I would say expect the best Jaden Cox uh, on the mat come uh, come Paris. I mean, my one concern would be he's he hasn't had the international mat time. Uh, this right. year, like he did last year, leading up to the world or to the Olympics, he, well, had, he had to qualify the weight class. Right, he went to the World Cup, he went to the Mongolia qualifier, he went to Germany last year. So he had three international competitions under his belt between trials and the Olympics last year. This year, he has none. He didn't wrestle in Spain because uh, you know he, he wanted to fully recover with that knee. Um, but yeah, I mean, from what I saw in the practice room, he looks great. Time will tell, obviously. Uh, you know, once we get to Paris, if everything is 100%, but I mean, in my mind, it's a 100% Jaden Cox and, uh, he's, he's got a legit chance to win a, uh, to win a world championship here. You think his experience learning from the Olympics and 
that situation with like, oh crap, I'm actually losing here. I mean, how much do you think he learned from his Olympic experience? I think he'll learn to uh, figure out if he's winning on criteria or not during the match. Now, second arrow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I th- want. I was doing this today. Okay, before Richard got to USA Wrestling, I did a lot of different goofy stuff that was buried in the USA Wrestling YouTube channel. And today, when I was looking at at eighty six kilos, it got me thinking about the sweat. And of course, you can't mention sweat. You know, we talk about the David Taylor stuff. Blah blah blah. That's all in the past. Go look at the sweat workout video i did from like 2010 with justin ruiz okay he is ringing out the sh- just that's all i'm gonna say there's two things there's the lebron james video and the justin ruiz video and they were like connected like oh you might want to watch this between my like nintendo retro gaming videos but yeah do yourself a favor find the justin ruiz sweat workout and be like oh it's not just Jaden cox so anyway yep uh this could Super fun. Super, super adventure time fun. Yeah. Other names to watch. Uh, who cares? We got them. Next weight class. <laughs> we got the, <laughs> we got the salient points. All right, One, big guys. 125. Yeah. Um, Russians everywhere. There's four more. Not counting their actual Russian. Yeah, I think, you know, you got to start. I don't know where you got to start with. Let me look start at with the, your seeds, Richard. Yeah. You're this supposed to be the moderator of this show sorry well you know what after the fourth hour of recording i think i i lost a step we haven't even we haven't actually began hour three yet right that's my bad i mean our i don't even what are we at on this episode i don't even know <laughs> so the uh the freestyle seeds at 125 are as such taha at ghoul who's going to be your favorite from turkey uh he's the one seed gino petrus Fili of george is the two Levon, um, Berianides, Armenia, forgive me. Berianidze. Berianidze. That's, the way you say it, it just sounds so right. And then Daniel Leggetti uh, of Hungary uh, is the four seed. So the seeds did the job here. We got Akgul and Petrashvili on the opposite side of the bracket. That's essentially what you want going into this because they're, you know, they're the top two guys in the world, um, you know, credential-wise. So uh, Akgul... I mean, that's pretty much where you start. Take down leg lace. If you can't stop it, you're done. Um, he's he's very quick with the... How about Turkey having two of the best heavyweights in the world? Each right. style. Right. That's pretty cool. And and Akgul, his last loss, Petrus Vili at the Europeans two years ago. So... Correct. Yeah. Petrus Vili won... And think is... <laughs> there's a guy just waiting behind him. I think, actually, is it him or his dad? <laughs> from the juniors but no this is this is again a six bolded weight barry needs a uh, i understand magomedov from azerbaijan will be a scratch Have right not officially seen that confirmed yet but he was still on the entry list but do hear he is a scratch so that would eliminate one former uh russian ayal azarayev of kyrgyzstan also another former russian slovakia so Glov. And uh, who else? Oh, yeah, Zasiev from Ukraine. This is Zasiev's probably the one guy. Like, if I was in a, if I had to be in a wrestling match against somebody, he's not the guy I'd want to be. It's like, dude, you're freaking he's a big. big. He's a big boy. That's a, that's a huge, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, this, yeah. and uh, I believe Iran has gone with Moebi, right? Um, uh, Entry list, uh, yeah, Moebi. Yeah. Uh, Gosemi is also listed there, but you know what? It, it's weird how Gosemi, he's got the credentials. Olympic silver last year, he's not even 30 yet. Mohebi's also listed. and But then the biggest man on the planet is Parviz Hadi, and he's like not even on the picture here. No, no, and I think uh, they had another guy in there as well that was ahead of them. Um, I'd have to go back and The thing look. is, like all their like super good ones are like, 25 years old and balding. <laughs> Funny how that works. Uh, you know what? Let's talk about... That's Nick not Le- even the cadet team. Yeah, that's, that's the cadet team. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. We're kidding. We're kidding. Uh, Nick Wazdowski. You know, as I was saying with Thomas Gilman, 
uh, you know, a new guy, sort of. You know, Gwizdowski's starting to get the international experience. He's wrestled World Cup. Um, he beat Hottie at the uh, to to win the club's World Cup for Titan Mercury. That was actually a pretty yeah, cool it moment. was a giant axe, and you hit him with the ankle pick. It's like timber. Yeah. Uh, he I wrestled mean, that's exactly what was like watching it. He actually wrestled Zaziev at that uh, at that same event. It was a four two match. Zaziev beat Gwizdowski. Um And let me guess, counter takedown, right? Uh, I, I didn't watch it. I was just looking up the results today. Um, Based on Gwizdowski's yeah. offensive ability and Zaziev's frame, where he's built like the Great Wall of China, I, it, it's 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 probably a counter takedown. I would have to guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that, that was a yawn. Sense. Just yeah, in case you're sorry, wondering. I was, I was yawning. My previous pause was because I wasn't prepared. That one was actually tired. <laughs> um, but going back to Gwizdowski, comparing him against the field, I really like his chances here to go deep and make a run. Um, let's move on to Saturday. Fresh start for Breeze Brothers. It's now Ellis Coleman's birthday in Colorado. <laughs> Uh, we start with 65 kilos on Saturday, August 26th, the final day of competition. Um, this is the day my voice would be completely shot. Yes, I do believe it will. Let's, let's get our notes situated here. Again, giant weight class. One, two, I see three bold, two bolded names on my list. Only f- this is actually really kind of, I mean, for 65 is the weight as it normally is kind of barren. Let's go over the seeds, Mr. Emil. Yeah, the seeds. Boris Novotkov of Bulgaria. <clears throat> Not entered, surprisingly. Yes. Um, Zarabi Ayako Bishvili of Georgia is the two seed. I do believe he is in there. Um he good. Soslin Romanov of uh, Russia is the three seed, and he is not the entrant. And then Franklin Gomez is the four. Um, Franklin's in there, correct? Yes, he is. So yep. uh, basically, Iakobishvili and Gomez will be separated, and that does nothing for the bracket. Um, so you're looking at, uh, I mean, as I was saying with Rutherford, well, with Rutherford, he's at this weight class, with Gilman. Rutherford's got a huge chance here, huge opportunity to make his mark, to jump up to the top. Um, and, I mean, call me biased, call me American. I think Zane Rutherford can win this weight. It, I think he's got a great shot at definitely shaking things up because here's what I think most international people are afraid of is it's another, I mean, because what happened when you wrestled Metcalf? You're like, shh, uh, well, okay, yeah. Y- y- Four-letter word that means excrement. Yeah, you're going to get tired, then you're going to lose your next match. You might beat Metcalf, but you're going to probably lose your next match because he freaking crushed you. Then you've got a guy that follows him like Molinero. He's like, ah, oh, crap, another one of these Americans that doesn't quit. Now you've got Rutherford, another one of these Americans that doesn't quit. I mean, yeah. This is Zane being an unknown factor here for a lot of these people. Bad draw. If you want to talk about a guy that's a bad draw, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in America, he is the bad draw. I guarantee you, Mustafa Kaya from Turkey is like, oh, I hope I don't draw that yeah. guy. I mean, and and you mentioned it earlier, the list of credentials in this weight class is not deep. You don't have guys that have won... Um, consistently at this level at this tournament or the Olympics. I mean, you got Franklin Gomez, who was a world silver in 2011. And then you got, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then what do you got? You got, uh, Alan Gogayev of Russia, who's a junior world champ. And, oh, he, he, good. he won, he good. uh, silver at the worlds in 2010. Is that what we got here? So, um, yeah, the, 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 oh, Another guy to pay attention to, Bahrain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Adam Batirov. Adam Batirov just hanging around at 32 years old. You know. Yeah. But he's kind of good. I mean, uh, other guys to watch out for. You got a guy like Hoslin Garcia. Um, Gritty yeah. veteran. Hanging out with Zeke. Let's see what right. happens. Um, you know, Tobier, 
of Cuba. He's tough. Um, I mean, gosh, I don't even know. You, I'm just the thing is, here's what I don't see at this weight class. I do right. not see the junior world champs. I don't see the junior world medalists. There, this this weight class is really devoid of like that. Could I mean? You look at it, Zane was a cadet world champ five years ago. I mean, we got a junior world bronze the same time frame with, with a sheer off from Kazakhstan. We do not have a weight class that's got, okay, no senior level guys. Great. Oh, we got junior, junior, junior. There's not even that here. This weight class is prime for the taking for the Zane yeah. train. I mean, I, I completely agree. He's going to do very well at this tournament. Um what if what if Zane and Gomez? I mean, they're in the same situation, right? right. They hint it. I mean, Casey's been coaching. Uh, Casey and Cody have been coaching Franklin overseas. Don't forget. Does that create? Sorry, no. Go, continue. No, no. <laughs> Don't forget what I just burped on the microphone. <laughs> I just yawned. We did a burp yawn at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I was going to bring up, uh, you uh, want to bring up David Habit, you know, from Slovenia. American fans would know him. Edinburgh NCAA finalist. He, he might, yeah, third yeah, because we, 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 yeah, first Slovenian wrestler ever to medal at the European Championships. I actually had a chance to talk to Andy Rovat. Was actually wearing the Silent H wrestling shirt on, uh, at this point, August 15th, or actually 14th. Uh, hashtag wrestling shirt a day. So those are the things, and and that's the one thing that the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club's like. Yeah, we got Americans in here. Guess what? We got Lebanese guys in here. We got Serbians. We got Slovakians. Yeah, this is Slovenians. Yeah, apparently Rovat's like the fourth most common name in in Slovenia. So it's like Smith, Johnson, Williams, Jones. Yeah, it's it's Rovat in <laughs> Slovenia. That's good. Um. Yeah. Go fighting Scots from Slovenia. There you go. Have it from Edinburgh. Um, I think that, I mean, if you're trying to peg a favorite here, credential wise, it's Gomez. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, I'd, I'd almost have to lean. Uh, I mean, it's been a long time since he was there. That's what I struggle yeah. with. So, I mean, this weight essentially wide open. I mean, the thing is, the 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 one two, the one and two for the Europeans aren't even right. entered. I mean, and Beck Bulatov just pretty much housed Novotkov in the finals. And if Novotkov was going to be the number one, I'd almost have to lean towards Gugayev because, well, he's the Russian champ. Yeah, I mean, you know, Gugayev is definitely up there. Um, I like Zane though. I really like Zane in this weight class. I just think he's going to excel. He's, he's good. good. All right, seventy kilos. Oh, this, this one's great. A bit fun, this one's dude. Great... Another a non-Olympic weight class. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bold, na- eight bolded names. And when I, again I say bolded names, I mean they're world or Olympic medalists here. Yeah, I mean, and you're looking at. Uh, well, let me read the seeds off first, but not that it'll really matter. Um, number one seed is James Green from the USA. Greasy. Greasy. Um. Awesome shirts, by the way. Those green to gold shirts. I put my order in. Those are. I have not uh, done those that are, yet. Those are killer. Probably sure. Uh, two seeds, Kurban Aliyev, who was the world champ at this weight last year, but he's not in here. Um, nope. Magomed Khabib Katamagomedov. Russian Federation is your Russian entry. Yes. Uh, three seed is Mihail Sava of Moldova. He is in there. And then four seed is Nurlan Begzanov of Kazakhstan, who's not in there. So. Your seeds are going to separate green and Sava, which in this particular weight class, uh, that doesn't help. So yeah. I want to start with uh, superstar Frank, Frank Chimizo. Chimizo unseeded. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Frank, Frank Chimizo Marquez unseeded. Frank is currently on a beach somewhere in the uh, uh, Nice, France. French yeah, Riviera. French Riviera. Um, but he will show up. Uh, and he will win a yes, lot of matches. He will. He is he he's one of the most exciting guys to watch. I mean, he's got the personality, he's got the uh on the mat uh skill set, but he's just 
he's got a killer instinct. You know, you just see, he just knows how to win. We've talked about these guys, the Kinchegashvili's like Steber that just go out there and they know how to win. When it, when it comes down to it, they win. Um, Olympic bronze medalist, world champ. He's He's got phenomenal wins. I would tell you the one guy he hasn't beat, though, is our American James Green. Uh, yeah, it was what size uh, was it? Spanish Grand Prix or Ukraine? It was, or was it was it 2015 Grand Prix of Spain finals. I think that match is up on YouTube somewhere. Great match. It was like 5-5 criteria win for, for James. Um, so, yeah, Chimizo, uh, I'd probably lean to him as the favorite. He's your number one seed in the world. He was the Euro champ, right? Uh, number one ranked wrestler in the world, I should say. Um, but where do you go from there? I mean, you've got... Uh, a handful of Olympic medalists. Well, Gajia from Poland, who was in and out of the Olympics. That's one of those you're like, okay, yeah, whatever. He's actually not even at this weight class now that I think about it. See, is he up? Uh, I'm just doing a quick, quick look. I think you got to go with the Ganserigs. Uh, Ganserigs been. Uh... Oh no, there he is. He's at, oh uh, Gazia went down. We actually didn't mention him at sixty. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. Well, you can't mention Ganzerig without mentioning Navruzov. I was getting there. Go ahead. And well, they're wrestle emo- wrestle. They're emoji. all. That's all I want to say. They were all in the uh, the medal matches at uh, sixty five last year at the Olympics. They're all up at seventy. Um, you know, so that's that's an interesting tidbit. That. Uh, yeah, Mostafa Hussein Kani from Iran. Yeah. Yep. I, I I'm just looking at this weight. Jakob Gore from Turkey. Yeah, Gore's solid. Um, uh, Radulov from Ukraine. I mean, he's got experience. He doesn't really have medals, but it's like scary draw. Yeah. Amara from Azerbaijan. He's solid. He's someone that could make a deep run. And, and he was a late replacement too. He wasn't their initial entry. He he came in junior world bronze medals 2013. Uh, won the U23 Europeans, which is a weight, which is an age group. There will be a under-23 World Championships this year in some town I cannot pronounce, Poland, <laughs> over Thanksgiving weekend. So uh, Omarov won that. This is like the third year they've done the European uh, U23. So uh, dangerous guy to watch. Hosin Kani of Iran. So, you know, he's he good. Did. Uh, so, I mean, this this weight class is just littered with good guys, I um, mean, top to bottom. But they're all sort of, you know, all the contenders are right there on the same tier. I, I, just like 61, I think there's four or five, maybe even six guys that could pull this thing out. With Chimizo, I think, being the the front runner, um, and James Green is right there uh, with all those guys from an American perspective. So, I think you, this is going to be one of the most exciting weight classes to watch, for sure. I'm excited for it. Um, You want to go to 74? Big Daddy Burroughs? Nah. Okay, we'll skip him. Uh, JB JB number two. He can can go in here. JB number two. Well, it's actually because now we're talking wrestling. I have to trade the moniker JB number one to him. So he is now. He's JB number one when we wrestle. When, When he's not competing, I go back to being JB number one. Okay. However, him and my youngest daughter Hat should do share a birthday, which he did give you some interesting insight on how he, how we did that on uh, bonus points. Yes, he did. He did. So check that. The the <coughs> planfulness was. <laughs> I seriously, I was having my morning coffee listening to that, and I seriously, I don't spit my coffee out much. That one made me spit my coffee out. So I spit my coffee out listening to Blood Round, and then Jordan Burroughs explaining how me and my wife, uh consummated our uh we don't have to yeah second daughter <laughs> yeah i'm not going into actual details but uh so yeah start at 74 i think <laughs> the big story here is clear, clearly jordan burrows um <laughs> and this is a seven bolded weight yes. if you catch it picking up on yeah, the thing. there's i mean there's a lot of talent at this weight class it's a very deep weight class burrows is <laughs> definitely the most credentialed guy he's got win kyle rochelle not not meant not, not, not in injured. Her, no, Pan Am champ. <laughs> um, Burroughs has wins over nearly every single one of the top guys. Um, 
I mean, he's he's the guy to beat still. He's the guy to beat. He looks like he's ready to roll. Um, you know, I'm just pumped to see him back in action. And, and we just, gosh, I want him to get that world title so bad. Um, but let's let's talk about the other guys a little bit. Uh, actually, I can mention the seeds. Um, Sonar Demirtas of Turkey is your one seed. Beksad Abdurakmanov, Uzbekistan is the two. Zelmokan Kajiev of France is the three. And then Yazdani Tarati is the four. So uh, I believe the other three are in the field. All three are in. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so we got... Yeah, Demirtas, European champion, defeated uh, Suleimanov from Azerbaijan, who's not the entry, because right. we're seeing Hasanov move up to 74. He'd been sitting there at 65 and 66 over the years. So... Uh, well- this this weight again, and before we even get too deep, Nestor Tafur, Columbia, via Boston University in the weight class, and uh, Bexad after Akmanov via Clarion, currently training at Harvard. So a lot of American flavor here, even mm-hmm. though there's uh, some international names. And people are going to wonder, okay, where is Godoyev? Where is Sargush? Yeah. Well, you know what? He's not the guy. It's Khetik. Khetik. Like the K and the H, yeah. Khetik Sabalov, 25-year-old, two-time world military champion, world champion in 2014 at 70. He's your guy. So if you're worried about the Russians, keep an eye on Sabalov. Yeah, well, actually, I was looking him up, and he's never lost at any uh, world championship event he's entered in freestyle. Um, So and that goes back to the cadet junior. He's also never been in a weight. Has he been in a weight class ever with Burrow? No, no, he hasn't. Um, anyway, but yeah, Sabalov is good. Those I think Sabalov, Burrows, then you got Hasanov, who was a uh, or Hasanov, excuse me, uh, who was your Olympic Hasanov. Olympic bronze last year. Ali Shabana of Belarus. Uh, Shabanov, it's that Cyril that 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 other Cyrillic al- alphabet always screws you guys up with Belarusians. The U is a V in uh, Belarus. You know, it's uh, minor details. It's neither here nor there. Yeah, he's the guy that punched Burroughs in the face like 15 right. times. That, so much that Lauren Burroughs had to take the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Punch my man in the face one more time. That was, tw- that was 2013 feel, semis in Budapest. I could feel that in Budapest. I remember mm-hmm. reading that. Oh, my goodness. Who else you got? Uh, hi, Lauren. How are Levon you? Levon Lopez of Cuba. He's just at 35. I, you think he's still got it? Yeah, he might have another run in him. We'll see. He's he's tough. Um, let's see. There was one guy I did want to bring up specifically. Well, you got Takatani in there. Burroughs did beat him at the uh, Beat the Streets. Oh, he just, he's, how is he 28 already? That's what yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, Us- Usurbaev, I mean, he, Kazakhstan. Uh, the, the guy from Kyr- Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Evloev, Muslim Evloev. I Asian silver transplant from Russia. Dangerous. Yeah, he was uh, he was someone on my radar that uh, continue talking. There's actually one guy. If this is the weight class I'm thinking of, which could be not the weight class I'm thinking of, but well, I guess it's some young talent coming through. I mean. Wait, uh, you know, Vasil Mikhailov of Ukraine, cadet, silver medalist in 2012. He's 22, breaking through on the scene really for the first time. And, uh, you know, can I mention, I just want to uh, just mention Javon Balfour just because he's from Canada. Woohoo! Yeah, Canada. no, El- Evloev, Kyrgyzstan, Muslim Evloev. Um, Muslim, thank you very much. Muslim Evloev. I've got to work on your your uh, naming conventions because it's taken me a while. It's fine. Um, my but, naming uh, conventions are a lot better uh, four hours ago. Yeah, well, uh, Paymon Yaramadi of Iran, Junior World Bronze, Cadet World Bronze. Iran's got a guy at 74, and Yazdani Charati moved up. This guy's got to be Okay, so good. back to Evloev. I was trying to really get to this guy because he's the guy you need to watch out for. Because he has wins at the Islamic Solidarity Games from, uh, I think that was last month, over Demirtas, Abdrakmanov, Hasanov, and Payman Yarmadi, who's the Iranian guy. And he def- 
Okay. And he defeated uh, Sabolov at the Yasar Dogu this year. So this guy has beaten quite a bit of the top contenders. Watch out for him. Yeah, where's he originally from? Russia. Yeah, so you think Sabalov's like, ah, crap. <laughs> Didn't I used to beat this guy when we were 12? Yeah, so wanted to throw that out there. He was uh, he was a guy when I was looking up things. I was like, man, that guy might be uh, might be the guy to beat outside of Burroughs. So, um, hey, keep an eye on Kyrgyzstan, man. By the way, they also kiped off the USA Wrestling logo for some of their sweatshirts. So you see, like, the outline of Kyrgyzstan, which is not, like, the most, like, defined country in terms of its borders. It's, like, weird. It's got, like, a little, like, an isthmus, if you will, of land, and then it's, like, bigger, and then it's, like, the USA Wrestling Souple, the red, white, and blue. is like, KGZ Wrestling. I'm like, I want one of those sweatshirts. <laughs> By the way, Mian Lopez does wear a uh, Bucknell Wrestling shirt that I gave him one year. And uh, J- not Jadidi, uh, Reza Yazdani wears a University of Great Falls shirt. Because one year I went to to Moscow and I took a bunch of the shirts to give away that I wish I could have for a wrestling shirt today, but I gave them away in the lobby. So the next day, like, here comes Lopez walking down the hallway wearing a Bucknell wrestling shirt. I'm like, hey, Wurzberger, think this guy's got any eligibility left? He goes, who's that? I go, oh, he's a five-time world champion. He's gigantic. Anyway. I tell you what, I think that's a wrap for 74. Uh, Going to be a deep, exciting weight class. Let's move to 97. Last weight class. Last weight class of the bonus time. Captain Short America. Dun, 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 dun. Kyle Frederick Snyder. This is a tough weight. <laughs> this is a tough weight. Okay, so let me just boil this down to two guys, if I may. Kyle Snyder. There's seven guys with bold by yes, there are, but let me just boil that down into two guys. Boil that down like chicken soup. For the soul. For the wrestling soul. Kyle Snyder, Olympic champ. Abdul Rashid Sajulayev, Olympic champ. Boy, I hope this is not first round. Tell me why, Because Because you've got I the have seeds. the seeds. Let me read you the seeds. Kyle Snyder is your one seed. Magomed Ibrahimov of Uzbekistan, your Olympic bronze medalist. He is very good as your two seed. Uh, Elit- there are, by the way, be careful. There are two Ibrahimovs in the weight right. class. Um, Elizbar Odekadze of Georgia is the number three seed, also a very good guy. And Magomed Musayev of Kyrgyzstan is the four seed, also a very good guy. I think the seeding is relatively good. Uh, they just are forgetting one guy, uh, Sajulayev. So, yes, it could happen first round, second round, any round. Let's just... Pray to the wrestling gods that they are on separate sides of the bracket so we can have the ending to this tournament that we all want. Sajulaya versus Snyder is the last match of the tournament. Do you want it the last match or the first match? I want it the last match. Well, like, right. Okay, so if it's not the last match, where do you want it in the bracket? Oh, and uh, where do you want it in the bracket? Uh-uh. If you don't, if it can't be last, if they're on the same side, where do you want it? Semis, quarters, first round, where do you want it? As late as possible, I would think. Semis. I mean, do you really want to watch them at 10 a.m. in the morning? Well, for the United States, that would be like 2 a.m. My point is they better figure out a way to get Sajulayev on the other side of the bracket. If there's a way to finagle that bracket, like, okay, shenanigans allowed here to separate. FYI, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, I think we're all on board there. Um, do we even talk about anybody else? Do we talk about Reza Yildream Dream or Pablo Olene? Oh, we or, can talk about some. I know. think I think a, a big player, Salas Salas Perez, is this way class. He's yeah, he up. has moved up. He's a dangerous guy. Um, Alborov, Aslanbek Alborov of Azerbaijan. He's tough. Uh, he did beat Snyder at the World Cup, albeit it was very fluky. Um, well, Snyder also took. Two fluky losses to the World Club. No, he, he took... He, Snyder's lost three times since the Olympics. He lost to uh, Tahan of Iran. He lost to Odakadze, who he destroyed at the Olympics. And then he lost to Alborov um, of Azerbaijan. But Alborov's tough. You got uh, Georgi Kato- Katoev um, of Armenia by way of Russia, who's tough. I mean, Ibrahimov from... Uh, Kazakhstan and from Kyrgyzstan, tough. 
Um, yeah, there's double E Bergimovs. You don't want to draw them yeah. at Re- all. Dude, I freaked out the Olympics. I thought I was saying the wrong guy for the wrong country, but oh, crap. There's two E Bergimovs. Thank God. <laughs> there's, there's three at this weight, Jason. There's Wait, three. What? Am I, or am I losing it? Uzbekistan. Oh, I'm sorry. Kazakhstan. No, Kazakhstan. That's it. Um, okay. How about Macedonia getting in here with uh, Nerov by way of Russia? Uh, that is, in case you're wondering, the way this has to be announced, yeah. Richard, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Okay. That makes sense. Um, we should probably mention... That's why you see FYR Macedonia, just like you see PRK Korea. Now, we're going to go over an IOC Olympic decathlon going through all the IOC codes in which Mr. BDI, which is Burundi, will uh, will answer all of these for you on the next edition of Short Points. All right, Richard. At current status, we're talking Snyder, Satellite. That's all we want to see at 97. We want to see it in the finals. We want to see who is pound for pound the baddest mofo in freestyle wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's going to come down to a couple you know, minuscule exchanges. Inches are going to matter here. Better takedown you know, game? Gets... I think Snyder's better on his feet. I think Satellite's obviously better in parterre. Yeah, if, if Snyder can stop the parterre, should he get taken down, I think he's got a really good shot. Because Snyder's going to score on him. It's not like Snyder's not going to score. It's just going to be a matter of can Sajulaya, uh, you know, he's got a dangerous takedown game of his own. Um, but when he gets on top is really where he separates himself. So can he get, can, can he take down Snyder though? That's the question. Can he take down Snyder? Is he big enough for the weight class is another thing. I mean, and if he is big enough, has he fully adjusted to it? Um, there's been a lot of talk about that recently. You know, yes, Donnie's doing the same thing, moving up in weight. But well, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Satellite just got married too. Yeah, the, can't rule that does out. Does it make you weak in the knees? Weak in the knees, Rock makes it weak in the knees. Yeah, so um, I'm obviously going to take Snyder. Snyder's the man. Sadulayev, uh, he's coming up to Snyder's territory, and and I'm going to give it to to Kyle Snyder. Winner gets a tank. Like in Monopoly. Oh, wait. You don't get a tank in Monopoly. Richard, <laughs> at the time we started this episode, which may be may or may not be three episodes by the time we finish it with Freestyle, I just got to make sure do we get everybody, every weight class covered. Okay, good. We've already gone through 130. I'm just making sure we got everything good. It's uh, currently 133 in the morning on Ellis Coleman's birthday. <laughs> As we finish up the longest episode of Short Points bonus time ever. Richard, let's just tell the people how they can pay attention to us, the tournament, et all, as we finish up and head to France. I head to France. Viva la France. I leave the 18th. I land the 19th. I'll be there till the 27th. They can watch on trackwrestling.com. USA Wrestling's got great coverage. What do you guys have planned? Who's going? What do you got in mind? Um, Gary Abbott and myself are going. We will have all sorts of fun stuff for you. Um, of course, the the recaps. We'll try to do video interviews. We will have a special section with all our uh, content sort of compiled there. That'll be on the website uh, within the week, I'm hoping. I'm working on a media guide we're trying to finish up. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of great stuff. Uh, we're we're going to see what we can do. Uh, it's going to be exciting. World Championships, always the it's the best tournament of the year. And, um, yeah, I would I would tune in. There's also, I believe, going to be some coverage on NBC Sports Network, um, uh, some, some TV coverage, as well as the live stream on track wrestling. Uh, tune in. Paris is six hours ahead of U.S. Eastern time. Uh, so we start wrestling, I believe, at 10 a.m. in Paris every day with the final set for 7 p.m. every day. So work that into your calendar however you will. 
Um, yeah, that's about all I got. That's all Anything I got with else? you as well. No, no, I think we've got uh, either one tremendously long episode or three great episodes as we finish up with men's freestyle. And uh, I'm going to finish my tagline, then I'm going to give it to Richard because I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time. What's my tagline again? Why settle for the win when you can always score well, bonus yes. points? Sorry, it's late. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. Yeah. Go score bonus points. We'll see you next time. Rock on. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.